I will ask Congress to pass a law outlawing sanctuary cities nationwide, and we will bring down the full weight of the federal government on any jurisdiction that refuses to cooperate with ICE. Joining me now, Alabama Senator Tommy Tuberville. Senator Tuberville, as always, sir, welcome back. Uh, Mr. Trump is on to something here. Sanctuary cities, stop the crime wave, get them to local police to work with the uh, border police and authorities. I don't know why we haven't done that up to now. What do you think about this story? Well, if you go back to when he was president, Larry, he was starting to take away grants of these sanctuary cities. He was getting ready to really defund some of the cities who were actually had, had sanctuary cities, but COVID hit and it put him in a tailspin and, and we know what's happened since then. But it's the biggest waste of money. It's a great way to launder money. It's a great, great way for these blue cities, uh, mayors and governors to steal money. It is absolutely amazing what, what, what's happening here. It's illegal, it's unconstitutional, and the American taxpayers are having to pay for every dime for this and we are so broke, Larry. Uh, I don't know where the American taxpayer is going to have a way to pay for their pay for their meals coming this coming year because we are going down quickly. Well, the cost estimates already approaching two hundred billion dollars by various think tanks that follow these things, and I think all that is probably very low. Um, it's of no help whatsoever. You see this story, I don't know if you saw an incredible story in the New York Post today about how this Venezuelan gang is taking over New York and other cities. I mean, literally taking it over, just moving into areas and running it. And they have, you, you cannot use the police because they'll uh, gang up on the police. They'll gang up on businessmen or they'll gang up on local passersby and pedestrians for no good reason whatsoever. This crime wave is spreading like uh, we've never seen anything like this before. Larry, when you lose respect, accountability, which we're losing at a fast rate, especially in the cities, uh, we've lost. Uh, we're losing our streets, as you said. I saw some videos from last night in Philadelphia. Mm. Uh, when, when you see the things that are going on with against the police and Kamala Harris wants to continue to defund the police, she wants to help people get out of jail, pay for their bails. It, it's, it's really uncalled for. And I can't believe anybody would vote for this administration again because we are in a tailspin. And, uh, you know, if you can look back, when I first got here three and a half years ago, Larry, we passed uh, the, the, the last CARES Act, which was almost $2 trillion. And billions of that money went to these blue state mayors and governors to bail them out because they were so far in debt. And they've done that again. They've done it twice since I've been here. So. American taxpayers are paying the bills, and uh, they're going to continue to pay the bills. We're not going to have a country left to pay bills if we continue this direction. Um, just switching gears slightly, uh, the issue of farmland, in particular Chinese buying farmland, and a lot of that farmland happens to be coincidentally near U.S. military bases. In fact, some of them are near strategic military bases, nuclear-related military bases. Um, my suspicion is if Mr. Trump were to win, he would put a stop to that. But what is your take on it? Well, he's having an ag uh, roundtable as we speak right now in Pennsylvania. Our farmers, Larry, are in trouble. Let's start there. They're in bad trouble. We lost 150,000 farms in the last three years. 150,000 have gone bankrupt. They're gone. They won't come back. Uh, the Biden administration is pushing everything to China and Brazil to where we take all their food. Everything comes here. The imports that we bring in are very, very low cost comp compared to the input cost for farmers here. Uh, so what, what are you going to do? You're going to end up selling your land. But that's all the global globalist uh, game plan is for the farmers to go out of business and to sell. Unfortunately, they're selling right now around military bases, as you said, very, very uh, complicated to see this happen. It's putting us in harm's way. But again, we're going to lose our farms this year. It's almost gone. Our farming will be overseas, importing everything. And then when you control the food, Larry, uh, this government, when you control the food from coming from other countries, you control the world. Mm. And uh, it's going to put us in harm's way. Can I ask you one last one? I, I probably don't have time, but I love having you. I, I was at a lunch today. It was actually a national security related lunch. But a lot of the tech companies, now, you and I might not love their human resources policies, okay, but they are keeping America in the lead, and that includes AI, the newfangled tech stuff. 
Europe taxing them, Europe regulating them, United States trying to tax them, United States trying to regulate them, the Federal Trade Commission, the Antitrust Department of the Justice Department, all ganging up on our technology companies. China is the beneficiary of all that. That's what made me think of it. Wouldn't it be nice if we defended our technology companies? And wouldn't it be nice if we said to Europe, you can't tax our own companies, only American uh, legislatures can tax companies? What's your last thought on that, Senator? Yeah, you're exactly right, Larry. If you just look at the reports coming out of Europe, <clears throat> they are so far behind in technology because of the costs there, the things that are being taxed. Uh, this administration does not really want us to have tech. They want to run it to other countries. You mm. got Bill Gates over in China. Mm. China will be controlling uh, all the big tech in the very, very near future if we don't if we don't start preparing for that and putting us back to manufacturing and building things here. But uh, it's funny you brought up AI. You know, uh, Kamala Harris is the first presidential candidate to be an AI president because everybody's doing the talking for except for her. <laughs> and uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's very concerning, you know, when the mainstream media is doing all of her talking for, trying to sell her and trying to sell American people on something that is not really true uh, and it's all imitation. All right, we'll leave it there. Senator Tommy Tamerville, thank you, sir. As always, we appreciate it very much.